love that. I love you look so cute, baby girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just upset. I'm upset as at our behavior as a, as women. And I really want to have an open discussion about it because it's crazy. And I feel like, you know, if you 30 and up, like it's, it's partly our job and our responsibility to teach these younger girls the way things are supposed to be. And what I am seeing is not it. This is this is not the way. This is not the way you should just this is, this is not the way you conduct yourself as a young lady. Now, one thing I will say, when it comes to dating and relationships, no, you cannot um you cannot help if someone cheats on you. You cannot help if someone lies to you. You cannot help if someone deceives you. You know, you can you can not help um, if people just show you a person as their representative. We cannot control those things. What you can control is how you respond, how you react, what you tolerate. And I feel like as women, we are tolerating the most outrageous things from men. And I truly believe it's because, number one, we... We don't like to be lonely. We don't want to be by ourselves. We don't want to show the world that we have failed. We want to um, continue to have our power. And I'm telling you, when you show up publicly looking powerful and you got to go to sleep weak, it is agonizing. It your spirit and it doesn't allow any space for the person that you deserve to enter into your life. So... And, and I know this firsthand because I experienced these things. And if you guys want to chime in on this conversation, please request to come on the video because this is not me talking at y'all. This is a conversation I want to have with you guys. Um, but what people like Young Miami may not realize is, and, and this is the thing, I can speak from my perspective on her Number one, Ashley, let me let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Young Miami. I'm talking about Megan Thee Stallion. I'm talking about these black men that get involved with these men that are rich and powerful. And they trade the money for their self-worth. And I'm sick of it. And what I was getting ready to say was because I have dabbled in both worlds. What do you mean by that? Let me explain. So I have dated celebrities, okay? I have dated regular men. I have dated very rich men. I have dated very poor men, okay? I can go put some clothes on and I can attract someone like Diddy. I'm just being honest. I'm not bragging. I'm just being very real. I can also look like nothing and attract these guys. I can also put some clothes on and attract the janitor. Okay, the point I'm making is I have dated both worlds. And what I'm telling you is when you involve yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually, actually with a man that doesn't value women, you are trading your value. It's what you're doing. And you do not create a space for a healthy man to date you. Just think about this. I'm going to be honest. It has been, dating for me has been insane. Almost impossible since I left Lamar. Why? Because now the perception is, oh, these are the men that I like. This is what I'm looking for. Whatever I did with him, this is what people assume now. Whether that's true or not, it is a perception that I have put out there. And so when people like Young Miami, I'm just using her as an example today. I, have, I personally do not have anything against her. My heart really goes out to her because I wish she knew how dope she was. I wish she knew that, girl, there is a man out there that only wants you, that wants to sleep with you, that loves you, only you. And she cannot see that. She's not creating a space for that because she's constantly agreeing to be in a space with a man who wants all these women in his space. I also have nothing against Diddy. I think he is a man that is doing what women allow him to do. 
I'm not, I have nothing against him. I personally just feel that more women could see the situation and then say no to it. And say, no, this does not work for me. No, this is not the desire that I have for my life. No, this is not what I have planned for me. Like, it's okay to say no to this. It's okay to say, you know what? Yeah, she is the prize. Diddy has not been in the media as much since he started fooling with Carisha. And she doesn't understand. Like, you will have so much more power and morality and respect as a black woman who is creating her own lane if you choose to say i don't want to do this now men are all like oh city boys is up first of all all of y'all is talking about city boys is up do you have daughters so let me just let me just paint this picture for you if you woke up tomorrow and saw your daughter in the media for Sleeping with the man who was not committed to her, just had a newborn. The day before that was on a date with somebody else. The day before that was on a yacht with some other women. And the day before that was with your daughter. Would you still be saying city boys is up? Absolutely not. You would not. So stop the bull. Just stop with the cap. Okay. You feel like Diddy is winning and he's a goat and he's a king. And I've been seeing all type of comments because he's juggling women. Let me tell you something about a man like that. That is a very tormented, unpeaceful man. Any man that cannot settle himself in a place is not a man that has peace. And kings don't treat their women like that. Okay, so we're not going to talk about, yes, there are kings that have multiple wives. But the key word is multiple wives. Diddy won't even marry any woman. So any man that cannot even make a decision on what he wants to do with a woman hasn't even made a decision on what he wants to do with himself. Because every man, every real man knows he needs a woman in order to even complete his mission. So a man that has not even made a decision on a woman may not even know what his mission is. And again, I have nothing against Diddy. I'm using him as an example. I have nothing against Carisha. I just wish that as black women, we could first figure out where did I go wrong? Where, what place, how did I get to the place where I devalue myself? Ladies, we've all been there, myself included. There was many times in my past relationship where I traded my value for his presence. I am being honest. But I felt like I was committed to him because I was my fiance. I felt like I had a certain level of obligation to him. But then when it got to the point where I had to start questioning my health versus his, my peace versus his, it, I'm going to choose me all day unless it's my husband. We are treating black women, most women, but I'm just using black women for an ex as an example. But most women, most black women did not have father figures, number one. So we really didn't see an example of what we were supposed to even be treated like. We don't know. We're kind of just receiving what a man does and then saying, oh, well, this is better than what's his name or this is better than um, being by myself. We don't have a full understanding of the proper way we should be treated just as a woman in general. We are valuable. And yes, I agree. So let me get my thought out. There is ways you can learn. I was one of those women that grew up without a father figure. And I had to learn what my worth was. Most of it came from reading the word of God. And if you're not spiritual, I'm sorry for you. I'm just telling you where most of it came from. When I started reading about what God told me I'm supposed to be and how I'm supposed to conduct myself... To be honest, I was a little disappointed that nobody told me these things sooner. I didn't even learn that um, before marriage was a sin until after I wasn't a virgin anymore. I didn't have anybody to teach me that. And so when I started learning about God, I then started 
hanging around more godly women and seeing how they conduct myself. Now, everything about these women were not perfect, you know, so I would take what I like and leave what I didn't. It's, that's just what I did. But it started teaching me, you know, core values and just basic things of how I should act as a woman and how a man in general was supposed to treat me. I was so messed up, y'all. Um, Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to read the post. So let me just tell y'all how messed up I was, okay? I was so messed up when it came to my understanding on a male's role and a female's role was so messed up that I used to believe that if a man was opening the door for me, he just wanted something for me. And so I would purposely try to beat the man to the door so I could open myself so I would then feel like I didn't owe him anything. Yo, that, don't that just sound crazy? But I'm just being transparent with y'all and just letting y'all know this is how lost I was because I didn't have anybody to guide me. But then the more I started to understand my true worth and how valuable I was, I didn't touch a door if a man was around me. I'm not touching that door. We're going to stand at this door all day. Because that is your job. It shows honor and respect to a woman to do that. And now, if I was around a man that did not learn that, one thing I did, my dad did teach me is some men don't know. If he's willing to learn, good. If he, if you teach him and he's still rebellious and argumentative and don't want to do it, that's not a man that's willing to learn. That's not a man that's ready to be a man. And I believe that. And so there were some men that's like, I ain't got to open this door. Or so if you get to the door before me, you not going to open it. That's crazy. You know? Sir, we not going to open If we arguing over a door, <laughs> we dang sure going to be arguing over whether my legs going to open or close if you can't even open this door for me. We not even gonna have that conversation, you know. If you if you don't even feel like I'm worth opening the door, and I'm just giving you my own personal experiences because I was once a girl who was lost and didn't understand her her true value. And so when I see it in these younger girls, first of all, these women are in their twenties. Okay, they're just trying to figure things out. And most of these women that we're talking about this in the media, they're already wealthy. So they've established their own careers and these men are approaching them. These powerful rich men are approaching them. And instead of feeling like, okay, I've established myself. I'm beautiful. I invest in myself. I take pride in myself. And feeling like that's deserving of a good man. They are then saying, well, I ain't got to be in a relationship. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm cool with being over here. I ain't his side chick, but I ain't his main chick. Since if you are not his main and only, and when I be, forget the main. If you are not his only chick, you are not his chick, period. You're, you're not even on the side. You may be in the back. But if you are not his girl, you're not his girl. I don't care how we try to color code it. It, it broke my heart to, to read the words Diddy type saying, she's not my side chick. She'll never be that. She my shorty wop. Ooh, what, what is that? What is a shorty wop? I don't even, don't just, I will be like, don't even disrespect me. Call me my name. This is my friend. Carisha is what I would I would have said. This is my, please say that I'm your friend moving forward. And whatever we choose to do as friends, we're going to keep that between us. But please don't display me as anything like a lot of these people. And so, y'all, I just feel like as women, it is our responsibility to help. Yes, feel, literally. He literally typed the word saying, y'all, I think y'all want Carisha is not my Side chick, she never has been, never will be. She's my shorty wop. I, she has a special, she's special to me. And man, listen, a man who is unsettled, okay? And let me tell you guys this. You can be successful financially. You can be powerful in your field. You can be a boss and you can still be unsettled, period. 